Hi everyone, Salesforce Admin Training Day 32. Let's see what we are going to learn today. So today we will go through the previous session and we will talk about the use cases of the Lightning Flow. Along with the, like we will, today we will see the schedule, trigger flow and platform event trigger flow, as well as the screen trigger, screen flow. And for the platform event trigger, we will see what are the navigation steps, how to create it, and uh, platform event fields, what are the platform event fields, and what is the custom label, we will see that. And conclusion, track head. These are, we are going to create it. Now, let's see one of the use case. Use case is implement lightning flow to create a default account and assign that account for all the contacts that does not have the account ID. That does not have the account ID. So high level requirement is So create a default account. and assign the default account, assign the default account to all the contacts that does not have, <laughs> that does not have an account ID, that does not have account ID. So that means if we go to the sales force, In Salesforce, if we go to the contact, the contact, there are so many contacts we have, like, so few of them does not have, few of them does not have the, all the contacts. All the accounts, it's not having the account. So wherever the contact does not have an account, we should be assigning the dummy account. So I'll be creating a one dummy account, which is a default account. That default account is whenever the contact is created and if you did not assign the account, right? So during the night time or after some time, once the day is completed, so automatically it has to check in the system. Is there a, any contact today that are created? without account. So look at those lists and then update the account. And low level requirement is so first of all the type of flow the type of flow is scheduled triggered flow You can implement the same requirement in different flows also. But right now I'm going with the scheduled triggered flow. So I'll be scheduling a lightning flow so that it will run at the midnight or a time where the nobody is there on the system. Like usually time is 9 to 5. So once everybody log off the system, then we are going to check the entire system and cross verify that is there any account, any contact that does not have an account. So I'll be creating a type of flow is scheduled triggered flow. And this flow on which object I need to create it. On which object I need to create it? Account or contact? Oh. I need to update the contact. I need to update the account in the contact. So we will be creating the lightning flow on the contact. And next one, the criteria. What is the criteria that we need? What is the main thing that we need to check? Account ID is null. Account ID. Wherever the account ID is null, then I need all those contacts. 
Now, once this is done, then I need to look through the each contact. If I have a multiple contact, get all contact where account ID is none. Now I need to look through the each contact. Look through the each contact and then update the account ID inside, update the account ID in contact. That means contact dot account ID equal to what are the new account that we have created. So I'll be creating a new account here. This new account name is let's say dummy account. Now account ID equal to what are the this new account is there? New account ID. New account ID dot ID. Now, whenever once we update it, what we can do is we can also post this information on the chart. Post the information or post the message on charter. Let's do this also. So we have a charter. So if you go to here, the very, there is a one tab charter is there. So we can post it here through the lightning flow saying that this contact is updated. Contact is updated with the account ID or a dummy account is updated in this contact. Right? So we can update those information. Now, these are the steps which we need to perform it. This is the low level steps. Now, here, let's go to the lightning flow. Now let's create a new, new lightning flow. Now this time we are going to do the schedule trigger flow. Click on a create. Now it has a two options here, set schedule, choose object. That means first I need to set the schedule. Now let's say that now, tomorrow onwards, start time is, let's say, after everybody left, we'll start the automation at 8 o'clock. Every day, night 8 o'clock, once. Or if you want weekly, if you want to schedule this weekly, daily, once, whatever you wanted, you can schedule it. Let's say that weekly, I wanted to schedule it. Now click on this, done. Now my schedule is done. Okay, I just, I just mentioned the date and time. What is the frequency? Frequency could be a weekly, daily or a once. And this is optional. If you want to choose the here the data, you can choose it. You can directly choose the data here. Like what are the object that you wanted to do? You wanted to perform an action. You can select the object here. You can select the object. Now let's say here account ID is equal to what are the on the contact equal to if it is a not null. That means it should be true. If it is equal to null, then only take those contacts. I'm mentioning the object and the flow. In the real time, what we will do is mostly we will not specify this object here. Right? There are some scenarios that we need to come and get all the contact records here get all the contact records. It is possible because sometimes it will not take entire information. Now what I'll do here, get all the contact information. Let's say all contact records. 
object is contact. Now condition, again I will specify the account ID is null, should be true. Along with this, I'll also mention that contact phone number. Sometimes contact phone number won't be there. So I'll say that phone. I'll also take another condition phone is also a null. Then I'll select it here too. Click on done. Let me check whether do I have those information contact. Yes, I have the phone null and the account is also null. Perfect. So once this is done, the second step is I need to create a dummy account. I need to at the first place only I need to create a dummy account. Now, whenever we are creating a dummy account in the flow, what we can do is you can mention that today, what are the date, whenever you are creating it, because every day you will be creating the new dummy account. So in that case, you can take your own, like a today's date, what are the date is there, today's date you can take it. That means go to here, create a, day, create a record, and we are going to create a new account record. Now, am I creating the one or multiple one account we are creating it? So that's the reason I'm going with one. And how to set the record fields? Use all the values from the record or use a separate resource and literal values. So I wanted to use the separate because I'm going to declare the each one of them. Now let's say here account, account equal to name, Here I'll say the default, default account. Now let's say I wanted to take today's date. You can take a today's date also. Now in case if you want to just take a today's date, we have a system or else you can take a flow, current date, flow current date. And here you can mention the default account. Default account. Also yesterday we have created one more field which is called as the email, which is mandatory field in order to create an account. So I'll mention the email field also. Right? Now this is. Now click on Say now in this is manually assign the variables. If you want to manually assign it, you can just click on this. Otherwise, you can leave that. We do not use this manually assign variables because lightning flow is created only for lightning flow is created only for automatic execution. Again, while executing the automatically, again, if you want to perform anything manually, which is not a fair, so we don't use that. So this is the how we create a new record. You just need to use the new create a record. Element called create a record. There you are creating the new account. Now here you need, need not to perform any insert, nothing you need not to do. As soon as you take a, you take a create record element, automatically there is a insert is happening at the back end while executing the lightning probe. Now the next step is we need to loop through the contact. Now this is completed, then we have to loop through the contact. In order to loop through the contact, we have a one element which is called as a loop iterator, which is available inside the logic. So you can choose the loop here. Inside the loop, you can specify the label name. Let's say this Iterating contact records. Iterating contact records. Now here, what is the collection of variable? Collection of variable you need to give wherever you are getting here all contact, all contact records. Now, if you do not get this all contact records, 
right? You cannot able to pass. If you do not have this element, you cannot pass the collection to the loop. If you are using the loop, then you need to pass a collection. Collection data, you will get it from the get records. Scheduled one, you just have an object you are mentioning it, right? So if you want a collection data need to be there, then you need to create a get all records. Now here I'm using the loop. Iterating contact records. Now collection. Now we have a all contact. Why it is not getting all the contacts? Now here we need to say all contacts. While creating the record, what is the option that we have selected? We have selected the only the first record. If you have a only the first record, you will not we will not be able to choose this into the loop. So you need to select the all records because I wanted to get all the contact records. Click on done. Now click on this plus button, choose the loop by loop element. Contact records. Now here, now we will get the all the contact records. All contact records. Now this is first to last item, last item to first item. How you wanted to process within the loop. Do you want to take the order? What are the order is there from the first to last? By default, this is done by the sales force. We cannot give which one we want, the first one. We cannot keep that. It is automatically sales force does the order by. So what are the order by they have done it? So based on that, do you want the first item to last item or last item to the first item? Right, so it is, let's say, by default, first item to the last item. And click on that. Now this is loop. We are done with the loop. Now the next step is I need to update the account ID within the contact. I need to update the account ID within the contact. Update. So whenever we say update, so what we can do either you can use a assignment here, assignment here, right? Or else you can do the update also. Now, if you want to do the assignment, you can do the assignment. Let's say that this is the update assignment. Update contact. Now, where here it is. Now, let me create a new. Let's say I'm creating the variable here. API name is contact. And data type is record. I'll take the contact. Click on done. So contact dot account ID equals to whatever the new account is there. So new account. So new account record. Perfect. So this is how we will be mentioning the information. Now let's click on done. Now assignment is, this is the assignment. Once the assignment is done, finally we can click on the update record. We can use the update record here. Once my loop is completed, then I can create an update record. Or else if you want to do it inside. Or else if you want to do it inside. Now let me do it inside and then we will come back to that. Now let's say update record. Now here I'm updating the record. Let's say that update account ID on contact. Now here we have a how to find the records to update and set their values. The first one is a use the contact record global variable. Do you want to use the contact global variable or else? 
update the record related to the contact records that triggered the flow. That means you wanted to update the whatever the related records to the contacts are there. So do you want to update those ones? Or else you want to use the ID and all the fields from the record, record collection, whatever is available in the record collection directly, you can take that. That means you can just provide the record information, that's it. Now, if you say specify the condition to identify the record and the set fields individually. So we wanted to set the fields individually. So here, contact. Now, this is the contact and the condition. Let's say here condition. Again, I'm adding the condition here. Account ID is null. If it is a null, that means this is true. If it is a null, then I wanted account ID equals to whatever the ac new account record is there that I'm going to take it up. So click on done. Now here, I'm updating the record. There is a problem here, I'll tell you the problem. Now click on this plus button again. Now I'm going to post this information in the charter. Whatever the charter is there, so I'm going to post that information in the charter saying that this is updated. Now in order to post the charter, go to the action. Now you do not have a charter, nowhere it is there. Data, we cannot find it. Logic, we cannot find the charter information. Go to the interaction element and action. Inside the action, you have an option called post charter, post to charter. Now let's say here label, I can mention any label, let's say that this is a scheduled charter. Scheduled charter and the message is either if you want to take it from the anywhere like a custom label or anywhere if you want to take it, you can directly take it or else if you want to add your own message here. Now let's say that this is a this is a scheduled scheduled flow and completed updating the account ID. Account ID updated the account ID on contact. On contact. Now, this is the message I wanted to post it in the charter. I have, um, this is the message that is posted in the this is the message that I wanted to post it in the chat. Whatever the chat is there, I wanted to post it there. So I have added manual message here. If you want, if you want to take it from any other like account fields, any other fields, if you want to take it, you can take the those messages also, dynamic messages. You can add dynamic messages also. Now the next one, who is the person that you wanted to post this chat? Who is the target user? Who is the target user? For now, I'm going to take the target user as a whatever the current user is there. That is a user. I'm going to take it. Whatever the this current user is there. So that current user ID. So that means whoever is the user is there. Whoever is performing this action, that user. Now, for example, I have scheduled this lightning flow, and I wanted to know that when it is completed. I cannot wait in the system. I wanted to know that. I wanted to know that if the whether the scheduled one is completed or not, whether it is updated the details or not. I wanted to know the information. So as soon as I log in the system in a next day morning, what I can verify is I can verify in the charter. If there is a message, then I can see that okay, this is completed. This is yesterday. This scheduled trigger is completed, scheduled flow is completed and it posted the information. That way you can see the information. Or if you want more details also, you can add more details here, contact. And if you want anything like a 
contact ID or anything if you want, you can take those information also. Right, so instead of here, contact, let's say, no, I wanted to get the contact. No, from the loop, I'll get the contact ID. Okay, so next one is experience cloud site ID. This is for the experience cloud, don't worry about it. And target type, do you want to add the target type? And who all should be visible to? Like, do you want this visible to be happen only for few users or maybe a specific profile or a only for few users? If you want to restrict this visibility, you can restrict it. But now I do not want anything advanced is if you want to assign manually. Now that's all, click on done. Now this is a charter. Now also I want the final one. So this is for each record it is happening the post. This is each record. First record it will come. For example, I have a 10 records. I have a 10 records. So first it will go to the first record, it will update the record, it will post it and it will come back to the again here. Second record it will take, it will update, post it, again it will come here. Next it will go to the third record, update, post it. Like this it is going to execute it for 10 times. It is executed for 10 times because there are 10 contacts who does not have a account ID. Now finally once it is updated, I wanted to see the final charting poster also. Final charter poster also I wanted to update it. So what I'll do is I'll click on this plus button. I'll say here action. And let's say here action name is post to charter. And let's say all the updates are completed. All the updates are completed. No. Scheduled flow is completed. No target name, you can take the target name here, user.id. Right click on this term. Now this is the flow. Now let me save this. This is we are updating update account ID on contact on contact. Description is update account ID to all the contacts that does not have account ID. Click on save. Now this is a warning message. Sometimes we, do, we see these warning messages because why it is saying is we have added the all contact get record. All contact get record we have added and we have added the update account within the loop. There is a problem in this loop. Now I'll tell you what is the problem. Now let me execute it. This is just a warning. You can avoid it. Debug. Now when you are clicking on a debug for the scheduled trigger flow, it will give you the two options. Debug pause element behavior. You want to debug the pause element behavior, like step by step if you want to go for it. Second one is a run flow in a rollback mode. That means execute this flow, but do not commit anything in the system. 
if you check this execute this flow but do not commit anything in the system that means do not update anything in the system so let's check this click on run no. it has now step by step it has gone executed now at the last if you see here roll back it happened in roll back that means it is executed the entire flow and at last it did roll back the changes that means it reverted the changes it did not commit the changes into the system now if i refresh here i will not see any messages from the flow in the charter i will not see any messages from the flow in the charter now let's say if i re-execute it and say that debug again this time i'll uncheck uncheck the run flow in the rollback mode click on run now you see here here we do not have a rollback option because we want to commit the information in the system we want to commit the data in the system now if you go back to the contact you can see that contact record is updated with the dummy account And similarly, in the charter, it says that the first one is, this is a scheduled flow completed, updating the account ID on contact. There is a one contact, which is this one. And let's copy this. And this is the final one. Scheduled flow is completed. Scheduled flow is completed. And this is the user who has posted, because this is a user has executed it. That user has executed. Now, here is the default account, 8th June 2023, 8th June 2023. Now, if you see the debug here, now let's say here, how interview started by this person, this person has started this interview. I'm getting all the records here, I'm getting all the records and as well as I'm creating the new account here. Now, the, as soon as I give the account and contact, automatically the insert is happening here because this is the create record element, create record element. In this create record element, the data will be, what are the data you have provided, it will automatically insert the data. Now, the next one is a loop. I'm looping through the contact record. We have only one contact here. Iteration is first one is by default, it is taken as a zero. Now that is a looping group. And the next one is update record. Now I'm updating the account record. Account ID equal to new account. And the result is all the records that meet the criteria. What are the meeting the criteria? It met the criteria and it has updated the record. Right here, one more DML operation. Now, if you go on, post a charter, it posted the charter within the loop. Now it is posted the information within the loop. Again, the, another loop is executed and this time it is a ending the loop because we do not have any more records. Now this is fine and the next one is a post to charter. Post to charter, this is the final one and the last one is interview is finished. Now here we have a few options. If you click on a setting button, now, I wanted to see the Garner Limits Consumption. I wanted to see Garner Limit Consumption. API names show the transaction boundaries. Show the transaction boundaries. Now, these are the additional options which are available in the debug. So, make sure that whenever you are pushing your lightning flow to the production, you always need to check the Governor Limits, whether my Governor Limits are meeting or not. Now let's go ahead and see that. Now let me apply all these options here. Now um, expand all. Now if you see here, get all record, SQL query is one out of 100. And SQL queries rows one, 50,000 records I got it. 50,000 records I got it. Now, there is a one issue here. Now, let me note down, get all contact records. Now, 
right? What it says, Sokal Vari, rose, one out of 50,000. Your limit Sokal Vari rose, pulling the rose is, you have a 50,000. 50,000 is the limit. Garner limits for the Sokal Vari. Sokal is nothing but Sokal is nothing but Salesforce object query language. Salesforce object query language. Salesforce object query language. Now what it does is basically you have a database. You have a database. Now whenever you do the get records, this get records, whenever you take a get records, at the behind the scene, back end of this element, back end of this element, there is a Sokal query that gets executed. Sokal query that gets executed. What it does is it will go to the database and get the information back to you. It will give you the database back to you. It will give you the data back to you. Now this is one. So Sokal query is nothing but there are two are there. One is a Sokal query. How many queries you can execute it? How many queries you can execute it is nothing but from the lightning flow. This is the lightning flow. How many times you can go to this database and come back? How many times you can do this? How many times you can go to this database? Its max limit is 100. Garner limit is 100. 100 you can do the queries. How 100 you can do the queries. That means 100 times you can touch the database. 100 times you can touch the database. Now first time you went here. Second time again you went here. Third time you went here. Fourth time you went here up to 100. The so Sokal query is maximum Garner limits is 100. How many rows I can can I can get it? How many query rows in one single query? How many rows I can get it? The output to the lightning flow. The output to the lightning flow. It need not to be lightning flow in the Salesforce. Let's say that this is a Salesforce. This is a database. How many records can I get it in single transaction? So that is fifty thousand. 50,000 is the Garner limits. You have a Garner limits of 50,000. This take a notes of it. This also will come in the during the Apex classes. So Sokal query is queries. The Garner limit is 100. And the Sokal query, Garner limits are 50,000. Now out of 50,000, it has gone one out of 50,000. Now this is done. And the next one is we are creating a new record. Now, whenever we are creating a new record, the Garner limit is say that how many times you can insert or you can do the perform all the CRUD operations. How many times you can do the all the CRUD operations, DML statements, DML statements. How many statements can you do it in single transaction? 150. Garner limit is 150. You can do 150. You can do 150. Garner limit is 150. One out of 150 DML statement. DML rows are how many rows I can execute it? The limit is 10,000. DML means what? DML means data manipulation language which where you can insert a record, you can update a record, you can delete a record, you can do undelete a record, whatever the CRUD operations you are performing it, whatever the CRUD operations you are performing it, DML statement, what are the CRUD operations are there, you can perform it, 150 DML operations you can perform it. And the rows, the rows, how many rows you can insert? Like, for example, you are inserting a record. You are inserting a record. When you are inserting a record, how many rows you can insert? Maximum 10,000 records you can insert it. That is the another Garner limit. This is also, you have to note down. This is also to be repeated in the Apex classes. 
Now that is another governor unit. Now next we are looping through the each record. We are looping through the each record. And after that we are updating the record. When we are updating the record, see here, the Gardner limits are executed. Sokal query is 1 out of 100. Sokal query rows 1 out of 50,000. DML statements are 1 out of 150. DML statements are, DML rows are 1 out of 10,000. You have a Sokal query get executed in the loop as well as DML is also executed whenever you are updating the record inside the loop. Now, Next one is it is posting the information and after that we are ending the loop and final post which is happening. Now let me tell you here, for example, if I have a one lakh records, if I have a one lakh records, one lakh records that needs to be updated, one lakh records that needs to be updated, some dummy account ID. Right? Or else, let, let's not take that much. For example, I have a 60,000 records. I have a 60,000 records where I need to update the contact. This contact, 60,000 contacts, I need to update because 60,000 contacts are, does not have an account ID. Now, it will get all the contact information. Right? It will get all the contact information. But maximum how many rows can I get it? I can get it is limit is 50,000. Limit is 50,000. I can get maximum 50,000 reports. Maximum 50,000 reports. Rest 10,000, it will not be taken. It will not be taken. Now that's a, an issue here. That's an issue here. And next one, though it is taken the 50,000. Next, what I'm doing here, I'm getting the information of. Now, here I'll be getting the details. I'll, I'll be creating the new record. This is fine. One record we are creating it. Now, out of 50,000 records, it will take all the 50,000 records here. First, it will go one by one. First one, it will update the record. Second one, it will. Uh, the second option is it is going to. It is going to execute. This is the one record it is going to update the one and schedule this and next it will move to the next one. Next it will go to the second record. Same actions will be completed. Next it will go here and then the third one up to 60,000 it has to execute. Up to 60,000 it has to execute it. Assume that it has to execute up to 60,000. But what is the limit here when you are updating a DML rows limit is you have only 10,000. DML rows is only 10,000. So what you will see, you will see an error that your Garner limits are crossed. When you are performing this action, you will see error here. You are, you are exceeding the Garner limits. You are exceeding the Garner limits. So we should never do the updates within the loop. We should never do the updates within the loop. So this is the wrong implementation. It works perfectly fine. It works there if there is a less record, like if you have a 10 records, 100 records, or a 200 records, it works perfectly fine. There is no issue. But in some scenario, if you have more than 10,000 records, more than 10,000 records, then it is a government limit that is going to hit you. That means after, once you move these changes to the production, you might see that there is an issue with Gardner limits. So that's the reason it is suggesting us that, it is suggesting update ID contact element is the flow, can cause the performance issues, can cause the performance issues as well as the government issue because at runtime, the flow starts the interview, each record specified in the start element and stores the each contact in the record variable, check whether the update account ID on the contact element is still necessary to add a filter so that element access only contact records. Now it is asking us to cross verify two things it is giving us. 
do you really need for each account for each contact do you want to update directly here or else and second thing it is asking that do you want to do the software query here again i am doing the software query here again i am doing the software query here do you really need the software query again because you anyway doing the software query on top anyway you are doing the software query on top do you really need the software query that's the reason it is while updating the record it says that it is executed software query as well as the dml queries that means in this entire transaction you are executing the software queries two times one is at the top and also within the loop you are doing the software query within the loop you are doing the software query so which is not required this software query is not at all required we should not be adding the software query here now let's click on it done now let me go to the edit flow click on this edit element now click on done save now now it is giving us three heads up warning messages what are those three head warning messages it is giving that update id record there are no filter so when the flow runs it will update all the contacts it is giving the on top you do not need a filter condition you still necessary to add a filter and if i remove it it, it is giving me that there is no filter is is not there so sometimes it is giving the two options second option it is saying that filter is not required third option is saying that filter there is no filter is there so when the flow runs it will update the contact records so you need to take a proper decision here that those are the warnings but do you still need a software query here i feel that software query is not required because whenever that we are doing the software query on top we are already doing all the filter everything is happening on top now if i click on the debug click on run i'm clicking on the roll back no record match found in the flow no record match found in the flow now there is a error message which is coming the error message which is coming for that what we can do is let's go to the edit flow now here all contacts in case if you do not find any contacts in case if you do not find any contacts now click on here add fault path click on this and let's add the screen flow now we don't get the screen flow here we do not get the screen flow what you can do is you have to call another flow in schedule trigger we do not have a screen flow now you wanted to show the error message now how can you show the error message here schedule flow does not have it schedule flow does not have it now you need to call the another sub flow calling the another sub flow we will do it later for now this is how but here the problem is each record you are updating within the loop we should not be doing any dml operations within the loop we should not be doing any dml operations within the loop it has to be outside of the loop now here is your assignment assignment is implement same thing do not do the update within the loop what you have to do you have to take a assignment here assignment element take the assignment element and once it is updated in the assignment element here you need to add a update record here you need to add a update account and this update account should take the whatever the assignment is done this has to be passed to the update record in that case what will happen whether you have a 10000 record more than 10000 records it will be always outside of the update is dml we are doing outside of the loop so it will be always one out of 10000 it will execute only one because we are passing the collection to the update we are passing the collection to the update 
So here, what it is happening? Each record, it is updating it. Each record, it is updating. We should never write the DMLs within the loop. So instead of writing the update directly here, take a assignment element here and create a resource which will store the collection of records. Create a resource which will store the collection of records. And that collection you need to pass it to the update record. So that is the assignment. Any questions? Hi ma'am, I have one question. So as you said in governor limits, as per governor limits, uh, we can get uh, 50,000 records. So yeah. what if in our scenarios, if our number of contacts we have uh, are more than 50,000? So here, so here also you need to add another loop. And so here it will be, you need to add a loop condition, right? So store that entire information into the one assignment. You need to store all the assignment details into the one details. So when I say loop, directly loop is not possible. So you need to have a limit. Here you need to check the limit. Limit is get only 50,000 records. Get only 50,000 records. Now, once you have done with the 50,000 records, what you need to do is look through all the records. Once these all, all are completed, now you need to go back to the again this screen. You need to go back to this again screen. Now, whatever is completed from 50, the next, what are the count is there, right? So after this count, it has to be executed. That is the additional work that we need to do. Okay, but then how we, we will uh, distinguish like what all the 50,000 records are already uh, fetched? You need to count it. So basically you need to create a one resource. So okay. you need to create a one resource. So select the so debug point. Click on save. Now you need to create a resource. The resource name is variable. Now you need to create here a resource. New resource is a variable. Now this is a count. Count data type is, let's say it's a number. Number decimal is zero, click on done. Now that resource you need to use it inside it. So whenever the first record is executed, now you need to increment that plus one. Like that you need to keep on increment it. Like that you need to keep on increment the till 50,000. As soon as you see here count equal to 50,000, then what you can do is you have a one option here. You have a one option here. You have a one option which is a connect to element. Connect to element. Now if you want to connect this element to here or if you want to go back. So by using the another loop condition, you can go back. So as soon as the count equal to, you can add another condition here. As soon as the count equal to more than 50,000, then you can go back to this, this one. In my okay. previous uh, videos, I have executed the count. So there is a count which is already there. So you can look at my previous videos where how I have used the count variable. Okay. Okay, so any other questions? So that's the assignment, go for the assignment. So is everybody taking the notes?
Now, see here, second is scheduled one. So we have not yet scheduled it. We have just given the time here. Now, if you go to the schedule, let's go to the setup. In the setup, if you go to the scheduled job, if you go to the scheduled job, now you cannot see that is a scheduled here. Whatever we have implemented, the flow, it is not scheduled here. Now, how can we schedule this one? This one, we can schedule it as soon as it is activated. As soon as it is activated, this will schedule automatically. You need not to have a separate anything for the scheduling it. So whatever the you time you have mentioned, date you have mentioned, and frequency based on that, based on that, it will schedule it. So now I'm going to activate this. As soon as it is activated, now if you see in the scheduled job, Here it is an update account ID on contact. This is a user. This is a, a scheduled job that is scheduled and submitted by this person. When it is submitted, today it is submitted at 9.30 a.m. Is it started? It's not yet started. And the next scheduled time is tomorrow 8 p.m. Tomorrow 8 p.m. scheduled flow. So it will execute as soon as it starts the schedule, then here it says that started. Started and then it will give you the started time here. That means 0906 2023 8 p.m. it will start it. And after that again it will ask, it will schedule the next one. So it is weekly it is going to schedule the on that day. Weekly it is going to schedule on that day. So this is how we will see. Now as soon as I deactivate it, now click on this refresh. Right, the job has gone. So in order to schedule it, we just need to activate it. That's it. We just need to activate it. So shall I move on? Is everybody taking the notes of this and also the homework? Which one do I need to explain it? In real time, uh, in real time, in the production, fraud happens to the workflow or a customization. Workflow, why the workflow is seen here? Are you talking about the workflow or lightning flow? Okay. Lightning flow or customization. Mostly what we are doing, but you no, know, directly you cannot do changes in the production. Do not ever do, though you have this flexibility is there, but do not touch the lightning flow in the production. First you test it in the UAD or a uh, dev environment or a lower environments. Test it, then only move the changes to the production. It is a configuration, but if you touch anything, if you change this anything in the production, it might impact anything, right? It might impact directly the client. So this is a configuration phase. I can understand it is a flexible. We can go to here without a coding, but I would suggest lightning flows directly. Do not change in the production. It has to be go through the 
certain stages. First, do the modification in the lower environment, test it properly, then only move it. Real time, so basically what is the decision, how we will take it, whether the customization or not. So the customization or not is decided by the developer. Is decided by the developer. Now, whatever the requirement that we have received from the client, now, if developer feels that I can implement this requirement through the lightning flow, it's totally fine. They can implement with their lightning flow. If they feel that it is a, no, I need to implement this through the coding or a customization, you can go ahead. Client will not ask you, but your architecture, like whoever is the, the project architect is there, the architect might question you that why are you going with the development? Why are you going with the development? Now, in case if the client side, there is a, any admin team is there. Now, if they are aware of the sales force, they might ask you that, why can't you implement with the lightning flows? Why are you going with the coding part of it? If you go with the lightning flows, we can also handle it. So why are you going with the coding part? So it's all about the depending on discussion and decision made by the team. So the homework is, Right now, we have I have written the update account inside the loop. Update account inside the loop. This should not be the right. As per the Garner limits, we should not do any DML operation within the loop. It has to be outside of the loop. So this has to be outside. That means take out from here and place it here. But here, what should be there instead of the update, instead of the update record element, you need to take the assignment element. Assignment element. In the assignment element, what you need to do is you need to click, click on a create a resource. You need to create a resource. That resource is going to hold all the records that you are updating it. That means it is going to hold the collection details. It is going to hold the collection details. All the collection details gather and store it in this element and this element should be passing the data to the here update record. Here you will be using the update record element. Is that clear? Okay. Uh, let's move on. Next one is configure a flow to get list of related contacts on the account and update the selected contact in the table. Update the selected record in the table. So update any field. For example, what we are saying that as soon as you related a contact on the account, that means the requirement here is high level requirement. What it is saying that configure a flow to get a list of related records on contact. So get list of contact the records on account or for that particular account, related contact for that particular account. And then update the selected, update the selected contact record. What we need to update it, for example, update the title. There is a title field is there on the contact. So update the title field. Title field on the selected contact record. This is high level requirement. Now, what is this means basically? Now you have it. Now on this record, 
right? This is the account record. I'm opening the account record. In this account record, when I open the account record, I want the list of contacts should be displayed here. Now I'm opening the account. I'm opening the account. So when I open the specific account record, when I open the specific account record, I want the list of contacts should be displaying it here. List of contacts should be displaying it here. So this is the list of the contacts. List of the contacts. And for this list of contacts, now e it should be displayed in a like a, it should have a some column, right? So let's say a contact first name, last name, email. So this is the first name, last name, email. These are the information that I wanted to display here. Email and. Now let's say here I'm displaying the each record here. I'm displaying the each record. Now this is the first record and there is a second record. Now whenever I'm displaying like there are four records are available here. Four records available for this particular account. For this particular account there are four records are available. Now these four records, these four records here it is a checkbox it is available. It is a checkbox it is going to show the checkbox. Now, if I select this checkbox, if I select this checkbox and click on a next button here, click on a next button or click on a next button, what should happen for this particular record that for this particular contact record, title has to be the field the title field should be updated. The title field should be updated at the back end. That means as soon as I check this and click on a next button, immediately the contact title should be updated. Now this is how it should be displaying the, this is the lightning flow. This everything we will be implementing it through the lightning flow. This everything I will be implementing the lightning flow and this lightning flow I'll be placing onto the account object. account record. So what are this? This is the account record. So whenever I open the account record, whenever I open the account record, there is an 18 digit ID which displays here. It starts with a 001 and some numbers will be displayed here. Right? So like this, it will be starting with the record ID. Now as soon as I open the record, for this particular account, it should display the list of the contact. It should display the list of the contact. Now, how system will understand, how Lightning Flow will understand whenever I open the account record, it has to display the only this particular account related contacts here. Basically, somebody Lightning Flow automatically should capture the details automatically should capture the details of this ID here. Whenever I place this lightning flow on the account record, lightning flow is smart enough to identify from the URL, from the URL, get the ID. Now, how can I get that ID? So in order to get that ID, we, we have to create a resource called record ID. We have to create a resource called a record ID. Now it has to be with the same name. It has to be with the same name. It starts with a small r, record, capital I, D. If you use this record ID in the lightning flow, if you use the record ID in the lightning flow, what will happen? As soon as the, you place this component lightning flow on the account, this record ID, there is a logic has implemented by the Salesforce Behind this record ID, the Salesforce is going to get the details of this ID and display that ID information here. We are simply writing the record ID, but there is a lot of logic is implemented by the Salesforce. Whenever Salesforce sees the record ID with the small letter R, 
record capital I D. Whenever it says this word or in this this resource name, whenever it says whenever it says this resource name, it will try to that means Salesforce will understand. I need to get the record ID from URL. I need to get the record ID from URL. So that's how we use always the record ID. Record ID. Now let's go ahead and implement this. Now, in order to implement this, now what type of a lightning flow we can go for it? Screen flow. Type of flow is screen flow. No. What are the elements I need? First of all, the object. Object is screen flow is in the screen flow. I need to display the list of contact. List of contacts. List of related contacts, not the contact, related contacts for that particular account. Now that is one. And the next one is once I found the list of related contacts. List of related contacts once I found it. Then based on the selection, whatever we are selecting in the screen flow, based on the selection, I need to update the record. I need to update the record. And once it is updated the record, maybe I can show thank or end screen. I can show final screen is end screen. Let's go ahead and implement the lightning flow. Now here update, let's go back. And create a flow, new flow. Screen flow, click on a new button. Now in the screen flow, the first step is I need to get the related contacts. First, let the, let's get the related contacts. So getting the related contacts, I will use the get records. Now here, get, let's say related contacts. Right, and let's say object. Object is, I need a contact. Now, I need to get the related contact for that particular account. That means wherever the account ID is equal to that particular record ID. Now, how can I do that? I need to create a new resource. Click on here, new resource. And the type is a variable. And here, record ID. It has to be small letter record, capital I, D. And data type, I can take a record or a just a text. Right now, I'm taking it as a record. I'm going to get the entire report. Now here, account. I'm getting the complete account information. I'm getting the complete account information. And let's say we are available for input. Now, if you want the available for input, you can say that available for input. Available for input is nothing but in order to execute this flow, in order to execute this flow, you need this variable value. You need this variable value. If you are debugging it, you need to pass this variable. If you are placing on to the object level or a record level, automatically the system has to pass this variable to the this lightning flow. In order to execute this flow, you need this available for input. Wherever the it is required, wherever this resource is used, right? This resource is used into getting the all the related contact records. In order to execute the related contact records, you need this input. That means this needs to be provided to the element or a flow where it is 
if we have this information then only i can go ahead for that particular element or i can go ahead for that particular flow to execute it so click on done now here this is a complete record id right so out of this record id i'll take only one which is called as a id record dot id record dot id now wherever the contact account id is equal to related account id that particular account id record id get the contact id equal to that particular account id this account id is either developer has to pass it or system has to take it automatically when the developer has to pass it when you are debugging the code when you are debugging the lightning flows that time developer has to pass it now one record or all the records we are planning to get all the records now automatically store all the values i do not want any modification on this so i am simply clicking on this automatically store all the fields you got that the first step is completed first step is completed now the next one is i need to display the related contact details on this screen i need to display the related contact details on this screen let's click on the screen now in order to display the related contact details which is a table format which is a table format we have a something called here which is newly came data table data table this is a new one which recently came so you need to use this data table you need to use this data table let's say that this data table name is let's say primary contact detail contact section contact selection and here data table name is if you want any table name so for example i wanted to display here related contacts so label name should be related contacts related contacts now next one is i use the label as a table title if you do not use it the label name will not be coming here select this so that it will be displayed here related contacts name it will be displayed and the next one is configure the data source configure the data source what is the data source like you need a collection of information here you need a collection of information now this collection of information this is a record collection this is a record collection now for this record collection do i have any data here now you have a data table is there data table is there now do i have any other i can directly get it the collection details from the contact from related contacts contact from related contacts i can get it from contact from related contacts now what are the related contacts that on top we are taking it that is a collection of data which we are storing the information the next one is row selection row selection that means do you want to select multiple rows or a single row or a just a view only you do not want this one do you want to select multiple rows or a single row or a view only whatever you wanted to show you can show that so by default i'm taking whatever salesforce is giving multiple and i'll take that now how many records you wanted to select it if it is a multiple how many records maximum you wanted to select it so minimum is a one record maximum is a three records maximum is three records if it is a single record if it is a single record it will not ask anything if it is a multiple record it will ask you the minimum and maximum minimum and maximum that is the configure rows configure rows basically how many rows you wanted to select it next one is column now this is the in the table in the table we have a certain columns we have to display so this is the table but we have not yet done the this first name last name email we have not selected so what i do is i'll create a column here inside the configure column now you have a source field let's say here source field is first name 
click on done. So first name it came and add the second column. Second column I'll add email. Click on done. And the third one is let me add um, a department. Click on done. Now, in case if you do not want a department as it is a name, you wanted to make a changes to that. You wanted to make changes to that. So custom label, let's say that contact a department, contact DAP, done. Now it is, if you do not want the Salesforce field label to be displayed here, if you want to modify it, you can modify it. Or if you want just uh, what are the Salesforce label name is there, I just wanted to take the Salesforce label name, you can use the Salesforce label name. But if your Salesforce label name is does not reflect the proper name, then what you can do is you click on here edit button, you can use the custom column label, you can use the custom column label, you can use the custom column. You can use the custom column. Now that is the configuring the column. Now three columns are implemented. Three columns are implemented. Now the next one is a set compatibility visibility. I wanted to display this table always. This is perfect. Now next one is advanced. Do you want to assign anything manually assign the variables? Those are the advanced. Now this is the table. This is the table name and then I'll say here contact contact title contact title click on it done now my screen flow is completed the next one is whatever the selection i have done it in in this screen flow based on that i need to select i need to choose the record and i need to update it so what i can do is I can directly go to the update report. I do not need a decision there. I do not need a decision. I can directly do the update. I'll show you how can I do the directly update. So here updating the title on contact. On contact. Now here specify the conditions. I wanted to specify the condition which is a contact. In the contact, Condition is I wanted to check ID. What are the contact ID is there? Is this ID is primary contact first selection row? What are the first selection row is there? That first selection row ID. Primary contact first selection row of the contact ID. Primary contact first selection selected row contact ID. Just take that information and if you want to update here, you can update any field on the contact, but right now I'm taking the title field. Title is updated from the updated title by the flow. Right, click on done. Now update title on the contact is completed. Now the last one is I wanted to show the show the message. Now once it is updated, the finally I wanted to display a message. Let's say here screen flow. This is contact final screen. This is contact final screen. what I want, I just wanted to display a message. I just want to display a message, display text. Display text. Now what is the text that I wanted to display? This is a just a message I wanted to display. Let's say that I wanted to display the contact name. The contact name. Which contact name? I can get it from the contact details. Now here on top we have an insert resource. Select this insert resource. Select the primary contact and from the primary contact, first selection of the row and from that you can get the whatever the name is there. So let's take the contact name. Let's say name. 
name. So contact name is this one. Has Some I didn't understood like what is the primary contact selection report? You joined late? Yes. Okay. Maybe you might have to see the recording. I cannot okay. go back right now. Okay. Okay, so the contact name, primary contact selection, first selected row name has been set the title, has been updated the title. Has been updated the title. Now, if you want to make it a bold, you can make it as a bold. You can make it as bold. Now, this is done. Now, click on it, done button. Click on done. This is perfect. Now, what I'll do is I'll click on it, save. Now, primary contact is basically in the screen. We have a data table. The data table is a primary contact selection. So, this data table primary contact inside that we have a multiple rows are there the selection is multiple rows inside this multiple rows which row that you wanted to select it so this table name is a primary contact and here have you selected the first row so primary contact selection dot first row of the name whatever the full name is there that full name that is what we have recorded in the display message Now I'll just save this, save primary contact, primary contact and then click on your save, click on save. Ma'am, okay. what if like more than one row has been selected, how that second and third row will be handled because in uh, condition variable we just uh, selected the first row selected. You right. have an option here, selected primary and here it is a selected row or a first selected row, right? So you can have, right now we have not given the minimum maximum value. So if you give the minimum maximum value, it will show the second selected row or the selected row, whatever it is there. Now here I have taken the first select row, first select row or else you can take the selected rows. What are the selected rows are there? You can take all the selected rows. If you just okay. wanted to say, if you have selected the three rows out of that only first row, you wanted to see the information, you can select the first one. If you wanted to see all the rows of the information, there is a second option which is available, selected rows. Okay. Right, so let's activate this. Now, I'm going to place this in the account. Now, I have activated it, so let's go to the this is one of the account record. I'll click on the edit button, edit page. In the edit page, my lightning flow name is primary contact. Now what you need to do is you need to edit the page record. Once you edit the page record, You need to edit the page record and here you have an option called as a flow. Just this is a default one. This is a default one which is called as a flow. Just drag this flow here and initially it will be none. And what you need to do here is whatever your flow name is there. The first one is a flow name. Edit this. Your flow name is primary contact. Primary contact. And if you want to edit anything, you can click on this edit flow in the flow builder. It will directly take you to the flow builder. Now, layout one column and here this has to be checked because this is the record ID. Pass all the field values from the record into the flow variable. This has to be checked. If you do not check this, your record ID will not be able to capture the information from the, eight, uh, from the URL, 18 digit. So if you check this, pass all the field values from the record into the flow variable. So what will happen? It will pass automatically, it will pass the details to the record ID. Salesforce will be able to capture the information from the URL. So this has to be always checked. Click on this, save. Activate it.
and send the org default desktop and phone. Click on the next button. Let's say we are just activating here this one. Now we are done with this. Let's go ahead. Now, do I have any reports for this? Let me go to the contact. And let's see NYC company. Let me open the NYC company. Right. NYC company has certain information. Three records are there. So it is displaying the three records now. I do not have a proper information here. So let me go to the first one. Let me update certain values. Details. Edit. First name. New. And the email we have given the department. Where is the department? Let's say marketing. Click on save. Similarly, I'll edit the second one. Startup company department. Sales. Click on save. And the third one is edit. First name ready and the department is service. We call save. Now let's refresh this. Right, so startup is a first name. Startup is the first name, email, and the department. Everything it is displaying it. So for the new one, it does not have an email ID. That's okay. So this is what it is displaying the information. Now, if I click on this, select this. Right now, if I go to the startup, startup is having any title. Let's go ahead and check this. Details. It does not have any title. So what I'll do is I'll click on this startup. I have selected one value. I have selected one value. So this is the data table. For this data table, I have selected the first row and click on the next. Now, the contact name startup company has been updated with the title. Now, let's refresh. Now, updated the title by the flow. Now, for example, now I'll click on the finish button. When I click on your finish button, it is going to reload the entire thing. It is going to reload the entire thing. Instead of reloading the entire thing, whatever the title is already updated with the, this information, updated title by flow. Right, whatever it is updated, that record I do not want to show whenever it is, I click on your finish button. Whenever I click on the finish button, I do not want to show that particular one. So what I'll do is I'll go here, primary, contact, and next time, once this is completed, once I click on a finish button, it is reloading the contact title. Whenever it is reloaded the contact title, it is displaying the record that I have already updated. It is displaying the record that I have already updated. So what I'll do is simply, I'll create a, another element which is called as a collection filter collection filter so what is this filter does is if title is already updated 
do not pull that record into the UI. So let's say that this is filter on primary contact, filter on primary contact and the collection is, let's say here, related contacts. Now contact from the related contacts. What are the related contacts are there? That related contacts and here condition and say here, title equals to, does not equal to whatever the value is there you can give or else if you want is none if it is not none then only show if it is a not none then only show we can't done now what are the related contact here i have given what is this related contact now here i'm getting all the records i'm getting all the records and once i get the all the record i'm doing the filter i'm doing the filter once the filter is completed once the filter is completed now i need to pass that information to the right data table here now instead of this contacts from the related contact what i can do is after filter after filter, I'm doing, I'm getting the entire information that I need to change it. Click on done. Let's click on a refresh. Right. Now let me, oh, I have not saved that. Save as. Click on save. Version 2 will be created here. The version 2 it is created. I'm activating the version 2. Click on this. Now let's refresh. Now what I'm doing here is basically first I'm getting all the contacts. I'm getting get all contacts. I'm getting the all the contacts. What are the contacts I have received it? What are the contacts I have received it? I'm displaying on the table. Display all the records. Display all the records on the table. Data table. on the data table. Now once I display the all the records on the data table, I'm selecting the some information, I'm selecting the checkbox, I'm selecting the row, selecting the row, and then clicking on the next button. When I click on the next button, what is happening? The title on the contact is getting updated. Updating the title on the contact. Updating the title on the contact. This is what is happening. Now, what is the additional change which I have needed? What is the additional change which I have needed right now? Is first I am getting the get all records. As it is, I am getting the all the records, right? So once I get all the related contact records. When I get the related contact records, it is possible that out of this, I have a three records. I have a three records. Out of these three records, out of these three records, one record is already updated. One record is already updated with the typing, but still I am showing the three records. Whatever the record is already updated, I do not want to show that record in the table, in the data table. In the data table, I do not want to display the record that is already updated. I do not want to display the record that is already updated. So for that, in between what I have done here is I have added the collection filter. I have added the collection filter. What it does, it is going to filter it out. Out of these three records, 
it is going to filter like if they get me the only the records get only related records get only related records where the record the title is not none where the title is not none right so in between i have added this particular one in between i have added this particular one now when i have added this particular one so ultimately output of this collection filter is i'll be getting a some collection records collection records i'll be getting a collection records right so whatever the collection records are there so that collection record i'm processing it here and giving the input for the data table before what i have done i have given the get all records input to the data table but right now in between i have added a collection filter i'm sorting out it whatever the proper records are there take only those records so this is what the change which i have made it right now this is what the change which i have made up uh, this is what i have made a changes in the record so this filter condition it is going to give you that ask you the couple of information for this the input is for collection filter input who is the input who is giving the input input is given by the get all records input is given by the get all records what are the get all records are there it is given by the get all records and the output is given to the data table output is now this is the input which is given to the collection and output is this is the one now let me show you that let's go to the now in between we have added the collection filter what is the input here related contacts the previous what are the related contact is there the collection contacts from the related contacts related contacts that is the input field and what is the output i am applying it here applying the filter here wherever the filter that means where condition i am applying it here where condition where title is not equal to none where title is not equal to none this is the filter condition whatever the filter condition is done the final output will be stored into the filter on primary contact final output is stored in the filter on primary contact so that information i am giving here in the data table filter from primary contact filter from primary contact now let me go ahead and refresh it now it is displaying only two records now it is displaying only two records um okay so i have this click on the next button now it says that this is updated now the second record is also updated which is a venkat reddy venkat reddy record is updated with the title so details are these are the details so here it is updated the title by pro okay so i will send you the homework there are so much homework is there right and the platform event we will see tomorrow so there are five six homework are there i'll send you the ppt so you can take a notes out of it i have a call right now so i need to jump on that okay so that's all for today platform event we will see tomorrow